Cofield out here at Hooters. We're getting ready for a night of combat. And pretty star-studded card. A lot of guys with UFC experience. And one of the guys who was a reality star. I don't know if he hates that now, but Josh Haynes is here with us. Uh, are you bothered by that? Is that, you know, that, that you're still attached to the show a little bit? Uh, no, you know, I earned it. I mean, in a sense, the, the show did a lot for me early on. So I appreciate the time, you know, and, and the opportunities I've had given, you know, what the UFC did. But I'm definitely glad that I'm no longer part of that organization. Yeah. And we do have to say your name often because uh, people might not recognize you because uh, you let's say uh, – he won't punch me on this, but you're a little tubbier back then. You've cut a little weight. <laughs> you know, at heart, I'm a fat kid, so <laughs> I like chicken wings and stuff like that. So, you know, but since I've been out here in Vegas, I uh, trained with Extreme Couture. A lot of things changed, so it's just an ongoing process of trying to get better than you were. Yeah. I was surprised to hear you say during the press conference that uh, you know, you've got pretty high-level experience, and some of these guys do too, but Extreme Couture, you were saying, I, I get my ass kicked a lot. Yeah. You know, I put my time in, in the room, and I'll tell you, those guys sitting at that table are no joke. Every one of them's got skills, and it makes it real easy when you step in the cage. You know, I mean, I know, being the nice guy that I am, I know that my opponent's got skills. I mean, I know he's going to step up and he's going to fight, but, I mean, in all honesty, there's nothing. He, he can't bring it like the guys do in the room. There's right. just no way. I, I'm in the best possible place I can be. All right, so we talk about the reality show. Um, you were on there. You made it all the way to the finals. Uh, you fought at 205 on the show, and yet when I just mentioned it to you before the interview, you're like, nah, you know, the reality show, I have people calling me on it, but I refuse to watch it. Yeah, you know, I really, I gave up on it after, I mean, I, I watched a little bit of last season because I had a couple buddies on there, you know, but as soon as they were off, I was done. The, uh, the show's a mess. I mean, it, I really believe, and it sounds kind of biased, but the third season was the last time that it was really good. There was drama, there was people fighting hard, looking for an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it's been downhill since then. I mean, you got guys that they put together specifically to cause problems. They they match make that crew, you know, of fighters in the house, not based on skill, but based on how much BS they've got loaded in their background and who they are. And then they throw a bunch of alcohol in the house. Absolutely ridiculous. You know, I was on my way actually out, out here for a press conference tonight, and uh, my brother called me talking about some douchebag kid that's on there right now picking fights with guys in the room, you know, and it blows my mind. I mean, were I in that house at this point, I would I'd do the dishes, grab a kitchen knife, and take care of business. I mean, it's a mess, and it's a false you know, misrepresentation of the sport. So I think that uh, right now that show is doing a lot more damage for this sport than it's doing you know, good things. Did you ever have a bad feeling uh, like that on the season you were on with the alcohol in the house, that they were, you know, they're almost asking for things? I mean, how close did it ever come on, uh, on your season to guys throwing? Because I'm telling you, watching this the other night, uh, it was ridiculous. I mean, you have guys right up in each other's faces. You have 55s challenging 205s. I mean, something terrible can happen. And then you're going to have management come in and go, how dare you? Right. It, you know, the season I was on, um, Tito did, you know, a couple of good things. And one of those is he kind of forbade our team from drinking. And a lot of the guys took it pretty serious. So the drinking happened for the most part on one side of the, of the room. Um, the guys were pretty laid back. I mean, there was a couple, you know, douchebags on there that were drinking a little too hard. But... For the most part, you know, everybody got along pretty well. We didn't have a lot of major issues. I mean, the biggest problems we had was somebody stabbing somebody else's basketball. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, besides the fact that, you know, we were all there to take care of business at the time, it was still a serious opportunity. I think people have given up on the, uh, the outlook of it being a serious chance for them to do something. I think that a lot of these guys coming into the show, they know now exactly what's going to happen and, and what they're going to be facing when they get into the UFC. So they're looking for their 15 minutes of fame, and they could care less whether or not they make it. So you think they benefit anyway because maybe they'll get on smaller shows? Or I'll, I'll tell you, what's amazing about this is that Dana White was on the show with this guy, Junie Browning, and, um, and uh, Shane Nelson, and they were the ones who were drinking and fighting, and he lets them stay on there. But it was kind of during a summer where that's the stuff with the Jesse Taylor kid happened, and um, you know he kind of turned out to be a crumb. So... I mean, are they try? Is it is it an, a, an, are they softening up on it, or is it just a, a cheap attempt to get viewers, and they think that's the path to go? I, I think it's a viewer-related issue, and yeah. I can't speak to the nature of the show. I've been on a couple of reality shows, and I know the way they put things together, and at least for the most part, I know a lot about how they try to put these things, you know, on air and what they're looking for. But it's a bad approach right now, and I mean, I'm going to offend somebody, and I know it. But going into these shows, there are guys that they look for that are handpicked to win. And those are who they expect to win. And then there's guys that get by on being tough or pulling out a surprise card. And I know I did it. I mean, my season, 
nobody expected me to make it as far as I did. And I made it that far on, on simple desire and the fact that I fought hard to get there. So, you know, I had a lot of motivation. I mean, going into that final fight, I knew Bisping was tough and I knew I had a lot stacked against me, but I didn't fight any less hard. Anymore, though, I think these guys go in lacking something that they're really needing, and it's that, that heart and that desire to do well. So, you know, you feed them a little bit of alcohol and you take into account the fact that they've got no desire, you're getting what you get. I mean, it's a mess, and I, I refuse to watch it. I really do, I, and that's sad because I'm get your perspective because uh, this reality show for UFC is really intriguing. Uh, you are on the season of the comeback. First of all, talk about the the general experience on the show and maybe how you guys were a little different as vets, uh, older guys, as opposed to a lot of the seasons where we see the, the newbies on there, and it gets a little more embarrassing and uh, there's a lot more crazy stuff that goes on. Well, you know what, I tell you what, the, the experience that I had on the show from being on a fourth season of Comeback was uh, we had minimum incidents, you know, uh, re regarding as far as alcohol is concerned and uh, illicit behavior. And I think reason being is that a lot of the guys on the show were veterans and, you know, they, they had a lot more at stake as opposed to just trying to make a name for themselves. Most of the guys that I was on the show with already had names for themselves. So they weren't interested in doing, you know, you know, pulling silly antics, you know, getting drunk and stuff like that. We had a couple of incidents, but not as many as the shows with the newer people and, uh, you know, and the younger people. Or, or when I say younger, I mean young to this sport or right. this profession. Why do you think it happens with the young guys? Aside from age, um, are, are some guys doing it on purpose? Well, with, with some, some of the newer guys, and, and I can't really, uh, I'm no authority to speak for them, but in my own personal opinion, I believe that some people will do anything to, to get a name for themselves or, you know, or to be recognized or to have their, their 30 seconds of fame or whatever. And, and some people will do that, man. We have to face it. We live on planet Earth, and there is no level that some people won't, uh, won't stay behind in order to make a name for themselves. Now, did you go on the show? Because I'm sure all these young guys say the same thing. I am not going to go on national TV and act like a jackass. And did it change once you got there? Not that you acted like an idiot, but where there's temptations and you're starting to go crazy. Because we, we talk to these guys and they act like they're staying in a prison. Right. Well, you, you know what? I'm no idiot. I've been around for a while, you know what I'm saying? And uh, no, By the way, no one's calling you an idiot, no, sir. No, no, okay. No, I know that. And, uh, <laughs> and, and so... Yeah, you know, I, I, I told myself before I went on the show that there, I'm not going to do anything to embarrass myself or my family because, you know, that's, that's pretty selfish of people if you have family, you know, you have, uh, you know, a wife or mother or father, you know, do you want them to be known as the, the parent of the dummy that, you know, that, that downed a bottle of tequila and, and did something stupid? You know, I'm just not into that kind of thing. And I think it's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. When I was on the show, I was I was there mentally, physically, and spiritually to fight. Whether there was uh, television cameras there, whether it was uh, played live or played in delay or whatever, it didn't matter, man. I was there for the experience. You know, it, it was a heck of an experience to be, you know, locked away in the house for six weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with uh, no responsibilities besides preparing yourself for your for your uh, day of battle. And and I tell you what, that that uh, that has molded me and shaped me and has made my skin a little bit thicker. Yeah. You know, when it comes to some of the uh, you know aspects of this business. What do you think of UFC putting the alcohol in the house? Is there's kind of a mixed message there. I think they want the antics, and yet when something really crazy happens, they're like, whoa, that's not us. Well, exactly, man. I mean, ain't that generally how it is, period? <laughs> you know, that's just life in general, man, double standards. Everybody has uh, double standards, you know, e even as far as it's okay for me, but if you do it, you know, it's not okay. Or no, 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 you know, we got this show to portray, uh, to, to break that old image of fighters being uh, – idiots that like the drunk and bar brawl and not being professionals but yet you know let's put the alcohol in there so that when they do start acting up we can come in and play the big hero you know like uh like we're like this is not what we condone well if you don't condone it honestly i don't think the alcohol should be put in the house